Now, I've been meaning to do a video around DSC for Linux for a little while now, but the main problem that's kind of been coming up in my head is like, why would you do this? Because if you're a Linux guy, you know full well that there are other alternatives. There's Puppet, there's SaltStack, there's Ansible, to name but a few. So why would you go the Microsoft route of putting PowerShell DSC onto your machine? And the short answer is probably you wouldn't unless there's a good reason. And the good reason in most cases is maybe you've got more Windows guys than you have Linux guys, and therefore it's easier to train them with Linux than it is to go and hire a lot more Linux guys. Now that said, let's go and have a look at this and see what you think about it. Now in order to get DSC working on Linux, there's a number of steps that we need to go through. And the first one is to install PowerShell. So I'm going to go ahead and add the Microsoft repositories and then gradually in do the installation steps one by one. So starting with PowerShell, then the OMI, which is the equivalent of the Microsoft Management Framework, but for Linux, and then quickly test it and then create a DSC resource to check that it all works as it should. So at this point, you can probably see there's a number of commands running on screen don't worry too much about it i will put the commands in the comments below so that you don't need to remember everything that's happening right now so first of all i'm in the process of installing powershell so if, for those of you who have not done this before in linux it's relatively straightforward you add the microsoft repositories and then do your uh, app update gets installed depending on whether you're using an Ubuntu or Debian release versus something else like SLES or CentOS etc. Next uh, I'm going to go ahead and do something very similar which is I need to go get the package so in this case it, we're not using the repository we are actually going to use the full package name and download it and then run the file so this is the case in uh, two packages in particular the OMI package and the DSC package. Now keep in mind that both of these packages need to be downloaded. So even though you need all three, in this case the PowerShell, the DSC and the OMI to be installed, you're going to need to have all of them and preferably uh, you're going to need to put the OMI in and do a restart of it to make sure that it's functional. So in this case, we've already done the installation of the OMI, if you're following along on screen. And now we're just doing the DSC resource, which is the last one of the three, theoretically. Now that that's downloaded, and we have all three packages installed on our machine. Um, we're going to finally configure the last element of this. And then we're going to do a restart of the OMI in order to make sure that the configuration is working as far as the OMI configuration goes. So there's nothing special at this point regarding the OMI, but we just want to make sure that it's working as expected and there's no errors or other bugs that might show up at this point. So as you can see, we're going to the ops OMI bin services control set here and we're just going to do a restart. So that now gives us the service up and running and from here we're going to go ahead and just do a quick basic check which is to confirm the service is running. So very similar to the previous command we go into the uh, opt OMI dash bin and then we're just going to run the OMI CLI <laughs> And yes, by this point, you probably get the idea that this is not an easy syntax, i.e. root dash. <laughs> and even I'm struggling at this point, as you can see from the my typos, OL and space OMI underscore ID ENT identity. So, and you should get a response as you see on the screen if all is working as it should be. And from this is one of the reasons why I'm going to put the commands in the comments. Now, assuming all else went well, the final step we're going to do is to quickly check that we have a working uh, configuration DSC file. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sample file. In this case, nothing super complicated, but just a simple create a file on the file system to confirm that it's present. So we've gone into PowerShell here using sudo. 
I'm going to go ahead and install the custom modules in this case the uh, DSC modules but in this case it's called the NX so these are Pacific Linux NX module so this includes a couple of modules that are really useful such as being able to make sure that packages are installed that the file system a lot of the stuff that you would normally find in the Windows ones by default but for whatever reason it's a separate module here so having installed that I can now do one of those or use one of those modules in this case the file system module to create a custom DSC resource now in case you're wondering you can actually quickly search for NX for Linux and you'll find the, the various modules for more depth and details so here I've used the NX file command along with ensure present type is file and then the destination of the file and the contents in this case uh, hello DSC for Linux so I'm gonna go ahead and run my DSC resources it'll create my MOF file so you can see I now have a local MOF and also the directory which is in now I'm gonna trigger the DSC resource next so this is another one of those lovely examples but first of all I want to prove that the file does not exist and that I'm not cheating here so if we do a quick uh, ls of the target directory we should see that basically they'll come back and tell me there's nothing there so here we have there is no such file structure so this is all good so far this is what we expect to see so next what we're going to do is run a very simple process of running the MOF file now there's no easy way to put this this is not a short command in Linux so I'm just going to copy paste this out a little bit in order to save myself some time so you can see it's the opt Microsoft DSC script slash start DSC config dot Python script with the parameters configuration then the location of your MOF file. So in my case, we know that it's under the home directory, under the my DSC sample, and the local MOF. And you can see we return a value of zero. That's okay. Zero is actually good. That means it kind of ran. So then if I do an ls directory check, we can see that the file it now exists. So our DSC resource actually ran successfully, as expected. So at the end of this video I have to ask myself would I use this and the answer is probably well if I don't have Ansible to hand then probably yes because although I am not a big fan of DSC on Linux I must say it is very effective and therefore good enough to use for majority of us and I can honestly say you can actually configure apps and other things quite comfortably within DSC if you have enough time and on the subject of time, we've run out of time for this video, so I hope you found it instructive. If you did, give us a like. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe and see you on the next video.